Hey, it's Doc. Nice to see you here again. Today we're going to look at how to create a perfect swing point. Last time we looked at how to quit flipping, and this video will tie in perfectly with that. The right upper arm is one of the magic parts of the golf swing. It'll keep you from flipping and it'll let you hit it longer and straighter. Here we see Matthew, one of my top students. His biomechanical movements are creating what I consider a perfect swing plane. We're going to find out in this video just how he does it. In this clip, we're looking at the club head plane. In this next clip, we're going to look at the plane of the right upper arm, and we're going to use the elbow as a marker. I really like looking at the upper arm plane. The upper arm is much easier to control than trying to manipulate the club head. In order to be able to control the right upper arm properly, we need to have it in the proper position at the top of the backswing. When we look at this YouTube video of Jack Nicklaus at the top of the backswing, you can see that his hands are over top of his shoulder. His right forearm is parallel to his spine angle, and he has good extension between his chest and his hands. Here you can see that Jack Nicklaus and Matthew are almost at exactly the same position at the top. Look at the position of the right elbows. When Jack Nicklaus first came out on tour, they called this elbow a flying elbow. It was different than everybody else. Just because it was different doesn't mean it was wrong. In my opinion, it has to be there in order to create a great golf swing. We can see that they both have their hands right above their right shoulder. The right forearm is just about parallel to the spine angle, and they both have their hands extended away from their chest. The positions on the right and the left are both incorrect. On the left, the right forearm is too vertical and the hands are too deep. In other words, they are too far behind the shoulder. On the right, the forearm is too horizontal and the hands are too shallow. In other words, they are ahead of the shoulder. You can probably already predict how they're going to swing from those positions. It's not going to be good. From the deep position, you will see that his right upper arm cannot be on a very good plane. His right elbow comes out too far, and it's not close to his side during impact. Next, from the shallow position, you'll see that the path has to be left. I want you to look at the movement of just the upper arm. On its own, it comes a little forward and straight down into the side. If you look at the elbow as a marker, you can see that it comes almost straight down. There's no curve, there's no circle, there's no plane with just the arm. Matt will correctly create the plane by the turn of the torso using the oblique and by the right upper arm rotating properly. Watch how the turning of the abdomen leads the elbow and puts it on a perfect circle. I think it's important to go over a little bit of the science so that you can really appreciate what's going on in the golf swing. The ball, or the club head, exhibits an outward force from being on a circle. If there was not an opposite force called centripetal force, the ball would leave the circle. So then, in the golf swing, we need to create a circle so that we can have an outward or centrifugal force, but we need an inward or centripetal force as well. Let's look at the biomechanics of how we do this. Looking from behind at the external obliques, we can see that the right external oblique attaches at the ribs, and when it contracts, it pulls the right side around in a circle. This contraction by the right external oblique causes the right upper arm, and we're using the elbow as a marker, to get started on the circle. This creates the centrifugal force. What then creates the centripetal force? If you look at how the arms work without the body turning, you can see that the right upper arm rotates and comes forward a bit. Also, the elbow comes back in. This then is the opposing force that keeps the elbow and the upper arm on the circle. Let's review the biomechanics of the right upper arm. As you remember from the forward lean drill, the clavicular head of the pectoralis muscle is the muscle that pulls the right upper arm forward. 
The next clip is from my two hour video, The Biomechanics of a Simple Swing. The right arm has to come into the chest and rotate counterclockwise. Well, the muscle that does that is the anterior head of the right deltoid. So it's, uh, again, it, its origin is on this little part of this bone, and then it connects to the mid part of the humerus, its insertion. So that if the arm is up like this, and the muscle goes from here to there, you can see that it would pull, when it contracts, it pulls it into the chest and rotates it counterclockwise. It does it just like this. Okay then, the obliques create the circle. The rotation of the upper arm is the opposing force, and we have a perfect plane. The same is true of the club head. The obliques create the outward force. The right upper arm rotation creates the inward force. Then we have opposing forces keeping the club head on plane. The idea is to get the elbow on the circle and keep it on the circle. Then the question becomes, how fast and when do we fire the body, and how fast and when do we fire the arm? At the end of the video, I'm going to give you some drills that will help you with this. The plane, the plane. Let's look at the plane and see what it means through impact. I've drawn some planes for you. On the left is a straight up and down plane. It is as if you were hitting a croquet mallet. The next plane would be a plane consistent with a short iron plane. The third one would be equivalent to a driver plane. And the one on the far right would be equivalent to a baseball batter swing plane parallel to the ground. If we look at a plane that's straight up and down, we could see that at the bottom, it just forms a straight line. At the bottom of the next plane, while there's still a bit of a straight line path at the bottom, it's not as much. In the next plane, you can see that there's just a little bit of a straight line path. Finally, in the horizontal plane, you can see that there's just a tiny little dot. That's why it's easy to hit a croquet ball or a putt straight, and it's easier to hit a wedge straight than it is to hit a driver straight. A baseball player can't control his direction very well at all. What then is the best plane? The more upright the plane, the straighter the path is at the bottom of the swing. That's why it's easier to hit a wedge straight than it is to hit a driver straight. Why then would you want to shallow out the plane during the swing? My answer is, you don't. In review then, on the downswing, the body turn creates the circle, and the rotation of the upper arm creates the centripetal force. We have an opposing force and an outward force, and the combination of the two create a nice circle. If you can create a tracing like this of your right elbow, you'll have a good golf swing. In order to create a really good circle, you must have width in your swing. In other words, you must have distance between your chest and your right hand. This is easily achieved by using the Pro Swing Band. You can see from this face-on view that Chris is getting good extension. Let's do a few drills now that will help you create that perfect circle. With his left hand behind his back, Eddie takes a backswing and stops at the top. Then he goes through transition so the weight is over his left heel. Then he fires his right oblique and there is a delay in the movement of his elbow. This is what starts the elbow on the circle. Once the elbow gets started on the circle, then he fires his arm so that he has the opposing force and it puts it on a perfect plane. Watch Eddie's right elbow follow the plane. Firing the oblique starts it on the circle and firing the right upper arm keeps it on the circle. Now Eddie will use the short club and do the exact same drill. Watch the slight delay of the right elbow as the oblique starts to turn. This is critical in getting the club on plane. It is absolutely essential that the body turn starts the elbow on the circle before the right arm fires. It has to start in the circle first. Remember, control the right upper arm and you will control the plane. The oblique starts it on the circle, and the right upper arm keeps it on the circle. 
Look at Chris's beautiful golf swing and watch the elbow form a perfect circle. The golf swing is like a beautiful symphony. We must practice the parts separately and then we must put all of the parts together. It is only then that we have beautiful music. Some are virtuosos and some might become one. But all of us can learn to appreciate the beautiful symphony. If you need help with how your arms work and also you need to get some exercise, go to proswingband.com and find out more. If you enjoyed this presentation, go to bestgolfdrills.com. We'll give you free blogs and videos. Give us your email address and we'll send you one every couple of weeks.